I have a gaming computer that I built. It's really cool and it's really great at running Sonic as fast as Sonic runs. The problem is portability. I have this little Raspberry Pi Zero and it's great at running Sonic 2, but it isn't nearly as cool. So I decided to bake my Pi into a tiny desktop. I'm not going to go into installing RetroPie here, I'm not great at software tutorials, so definitely seek out some guides for that elsewhere. I fired up Fusion and started sketching out some designs. Of course I wanted this thing to have fans, despite them being completely unnecessary. It just needed to have openings for ports and power, finally it needed to have a cool case. I wanted it to have decent airflow and maybe a little window to the board. I printed and partially assembled a prototype, it looked alright, things mostly fit together, but there were certain parts that didn't. The fans have a wire that protrudes out and gets badly pinched at this opening. It makes them nearly impossible to remove if forced in. I also don't like how the wire from the USB hub is revealed. It's basically a large hole that doesn't need to be there for anything else. So I printed a revision with a few fixes. This version hid the USB wire much better by creating a tunnel through a solid block rather than just a hole in the back of the panel. I also added a small cutout near the fan that should have allowed the wire to fit better. Unfortunately, this was not the case as it still pinched the wires and caused the right side of the fans to stick out. At this point, I was a bit frustrated, and I just wanted to make sure my tiny fans would make pretty lights that could soothe my anger. I twisted the two power wires together and soldered them onto a buck converter set to the correct voltage. Sure enough, I had some adorable little RGB fans quietly humming away. The airflow was on par with a slow exhale through your nose. It would mildly inconvenience a small mosquito, but it certainly won't be making a wind tunnel anytime soon. Back to designing, I added holes for magnets to fit the entire case together, and printed out the final parts. The chassis is perfect, there are channels for the fan wires, a perfectly hidden USB hub wire. I think this will work. Now I needed some magnets to fit everything together. While a lot of these holes worked for just press fitting the magnets in, there were some that were a bit too loose to hold them in without some help. 3D printing isn't perfect, but it gets close enough that a bit of glue will get it fixed up in a jiffy. The polarity of the magnets doesn't much matter as long as their partner magnets on the other parts are correctly lined up. Next up was mounting the pie to the chassis. I used some M38 screws and nuts to tightly fit the board down. For some reason my pie had very tight holes in the PCB that needed a bit of force to cut through. I hand tightened the nuts on the back, I don't expect this device to be subjected to a lot of force anytime soon. The USB hub has no mounting hardware, it simply slides into an ultra thin slot. Any device plugged into it will essentially lock it in place once the case is attached. These are the tiny fans. They were the smallest thing I could find on Amazon that still had RGB in them. Thankfully, the channels I cut for the fans worked perfectly. The wire was able to fit through and didn't cause the fan to stick out on either side. I used some longer screws here and realized I could probably get away with only doing one side of the fans. This was due to how small the fans are as well as a slight design flaw that would make the nut very difficult to attach on the right side because of the USB hub. Need to revisit that. Now I needed to attach the fans to the Pi's power. I stripped all four wires and twisted them together. I wasn't going to use the buck converter this time as that would require an extra power cord and take up precious space in the design. With the wires twisted, I used small ferrule caps to crimp them together. I know what you're thinking, why ferrules? But I have a bit of rhyme to this reason. I'm going to bend the ferrules at almost a right angle. The ferrules are hollow tubes, and the opening at the end is just the right size to fit over the header pins coming out of the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Using my iron, I'll melt the solder and attach the ferrule, soldering the two together. Both positives for the fan are connected directly to the 5 volt line of the Pi, with the neutrals going to the nearest ground. Is this bad for the Pi? I don't know, but I don't much care if it works. This entire project costs roughly $60 in materials, so if it fails, not really out that much. It was time for final assembly, and everything fit together with some satisfaction, but also left me wanting to redesign a few aspects. The back panel especially needed to be redone, so I'll call this a functional prototype, but not the finished design by any means. I went through a lot of revisions, a lot of iterations that only needed minor tweaking, and a lot of filament. But seeing this up and running was worth the work. A little desktop, purring away, changing colors, and most importantly, it was running the Sonic Hedgehog at like 60 frames per second. But now I'm kind of running out of ideas. What do you all think I should do in version 2? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to leave a like if you want me to keep working on this project. Until then, I'll see you next time.